I join everyone else in thanking Baroness Whitaker for securing this debate and for her excellent introduction to it. And I'm also very pleased to follow the noble Lord, Lord Byrne, Bourne, sorry, in um, uh, focusing on some positives, because I think it's important sometimes in these kind of debates we focus on all of the problems and all the difficulties. And one of the things I want to do is actually focus on some positives in my brief contribution. However, to begin, I think Baroness Whitaker was right to focus on the word scapegoating. And there is a real problem, an issue here. And we need to acknowledge collectively as British society that we have a problem with racism. And some of the most extreme racism is directed at the Roma, Gypsy and Traveller communities. That's a fact. And that's here in this report. However, we are grouping together three large and very diverse groups of people here. And so I want to actually focus, as a resident of Sheffield, on one particular community, which is the largely very recently arrived Slovak Roma community in Sheffield. And I want to direct the Minister's attention to a couple of reports, um, if you're not aware of them, because I think they are important, positive, constructive contributions to this debate. One of these is titled Roma in Sheffield, Mapping Services and Local Priorities. And we are here in the situation debating here in this House of Lords at a centre of privilege. But we have to start by saying, as this report does, listen to Roma priorities, to engage and hear what the community, this particular community, Sheffield, other communities we're discussing actually have to hear. This report finds there are significant gaps in the knowledge of many staff who are working with the Roma community in Sheffield. And that's something that the government can and should be doing more on, as indeed this report highlights. And something I think we need to stress, and you know, it's worth saying that we're debating a report that's uh, ordered to be printed on the 20th of March 2019. The third thing this report says that services need to react quickly to changes. And in the world we're in now, with Brexit, with many people who are coming to, who've come to Britain very recently, there's some real issues here. We have to be much more nimble. The other study I want to report to is one to refer to is one uh, titled "Nurturing Slovak Roma Children: A Secondary School in Sheffield," and that refers to the fact that the children at schools, for many of them, their first language is Romani, which is indeed, of course, not a necessarily formalised single language, but a range of a group of languages. Their second language is Slovak and their third language is English. Now, I want to point particularly to an article uh, from a Slovak weekly called um, Tizen, um, which highlights one individual, young man, Andre, who came here as an 11-year-old, uh, didn't speak any English. He's now a first-year psychology student. He does translation regularly and works in schools, working between, of course, Slovak, English and Romani. But he can also translate from Hungarian and French when required. Now, I've just come from the um, APPG on small business and um, small and micro businesses. And there was lots of discussion about the problems of Britain of productivity and skills shortages. Maybe we should be thinking about this in another kind of way. If these are communities that have enormous range of skills, can make huge contributions, and that's something we perhaps don't focus on enough. And we know from everything in this report that tells us that we're not opening up, allowing those skills to flourish. One final thing very quickly, many of these communities, as in Sheffield, the Roma have moved into some of the most disadvantaged areas in Sheffield, where they're already living side by side with people suffering great disadvantage, uh, racism and, and discrimination. We need to think about how we help communities to live together. 